um, where I'm going to be trying to focus mainly on fats and trying to give you an idea of what the differences are. Remember that fats are very high in calories and um, there are different ways of looking at them. You're probably a bit confused that you hear about bad fats and saturated fats, um, trans fats, but also you have the omega-3 fats, the monounsaturated fatty acid fats, and I'm going to try and give you a little bit of um, help with this. I have a wonderful table, which I'm a fan of, that breaks down the different, different types of fats, which you can see here. Try not to move it. Um, and the sorts of um, benefits it has to cardiovascular and other risk factors. And this is where you might find some of these facts. So if we focus um, to start with, with the, obviously you all heard of omega-3 fats. Now naturally in our body we are not able to produce this fat or even from the things that we eat, we're not able to make it. So we do have to consume it. Um, we, we, can't, we don't have the units to make it. So, and this sorts of fats is generally found in oily fish, such as salmon, tuna, mackerel, and so forth. Um, sometimes the canning process can remove the omega-3. So, for example, in tuna, the canning process will probably uh, remove it. And nowadays, a lot of the cans will say that it would have omega-3 added. But the, tu the tuna fresh would be fine. And uh, salmon, whether it's canned or fresh, would be fine. So, obviously, you know, have a look at what the label says. Other oils that would have omega-3 is uh, rapeseed oil, which is... Uh, organically uh, or locally grown I would say locally grown in the UK so it has less air miles and you typically see um, this is a normal everyday vegetable oil that we would see and they would normally look in be in a bottle like this um, so those are the local um, oils and again you know it has omega-3 which is good for us linseed oil has also omega-3 don't normally tend to recommend cod liver oil mainly because um, the liver itself would be filtering so much um, impurities from the sea that it's not one that I would um, be recommending highly. But yes, you know, obviously it would have high omega-3 values. And you can see here all the benefits that you get. In It reduces most things that we would be trying to, um, to reduce to improve our health. Omega-6 is another type of um, polyunsaturated fatty acids and it does um, reduce total cholesterol and it reduces the LDL but the problem is that it also reduces the HDL which is the healthy cholesterol that we want. We tend to find these sorts of oils in sunflower, sunflower oils, corn, uh, safflo safflower, uh, soya and cottonseed oils. So this is one of the reasons I probably would choose the um, rapeseed oil above the sunflower oil just based on the effect it has on um, HDL cholesterol. So this is the unsaturated, uh, sorry, the mono unsaturated um, fatty acids and this one we find in um, olive oil and peanut oil and rapeseed oil again. So most I think we've got three bottles here. I'm trying not to really show um, the names of products and things, but generally the bottles tend to give you an indication what sorts of contents it has. So most bottles that look like this are probably going to be olive oil. And then you have the different you know, varieties of uh, extra virgin and so forth, the virgin. Um, this is actually um, sesame seed oil. In this one in the middle. And this is just a normal vegetable oil. In this case, it happens to be a rapeseed oil. So what's the benefits of the monounsaturated um, fatty acids? And it basically you can see that the total cholesterol is down, the LDL is down, but it has no effect on the um, um, HDL, which is good because it's not lowering it, but it's not increasing it. So it's not having an effect on that. And then it reduces um, thrombosis and it reduces insulin resistance. So again, they, they are good options 
rapeseed oil. Again, you have benefits of monounsaturated and omega-3, but also you have the monounsaturated effect from um, olive oils and peanut oils. Saturated, what do we mean by saturated? So here, if we look directly, we're talking about uh, animal fats, coconut oils, and this, you know, um, all sorts of discussions about what we think about palm oils. But here you can sort of have a brief look that, you know, it increases total cholesterol, increases um, LDL. It has no effect on HDL, but it increases everything else that the monounsaturated fats would decrease. Trans fats tend to be like man-made fats. So they take an oil, like the ones we see here, and they are, um, they basically add things like um, hydrogen to make them uh, more solid at room temperature. So they behave very similarly to saturated fats. Um, and these are, you will see in the labels, hydrogenated uh, vegetable oils. So if we look at besides this one, um, and let's have a quick look at the labels before we look at other examples. Uh, so if we see per, this would be per 100 grams, but so it, because it's a liquid it would be mils. So if we're looking at calories, it's saying that per 100 mils is 819 kilocalories. So you can imagine just 100 mils of oil, this is olive oil, um, that would be the equivalent of nearly half your intake for the day. So obviously when we're cooking, we're, we're using a, a lot less than this. We're probably using 12 mils or 15 mils. So it would be a lot less. So that's why, and you can see here, it's actually broken down. So it's got the next bit would be fats, and the fats is um, 91, and then it's saying that of that saturated fats, is um, 13.8 okay so if we look at the um, sesame seed oil I don't know if you can focus on there um, so it's saying per 100 grams so again you say 127 so it's very similar um, saturated again um, in this particular case it's saying 91.9 so it's very similar again saturated is 13.8 really close profile but this is broken even further it's got monounsaturated fats polyunsaturated fats and it has obviously no carbohydrates no fats no sugars no um, salts no sugars so here we go rapeseed oil so we're going through the label trying to see so in this particular one they have it here, can you see it? So calories, uh, this is for tablespoon content. So it's really reducing it a lot more. So this is quite difficult then to compare for you if you were just looking at 100 grams. Let's see if they've got an 100 grams section. Here we go, nutrition. So per 100 grams, it's 900 kilocalories. So saying it's higher um, in fats. It says 100 grams, so it looks like they're rounding up their values in this particular.